welcome to another edition of the program, uh, a program that uh, brings information about humanitarian services in, in our society. We also educate and enlighten you on how to go about reaching out to the less privileged. I'm Chizo Bacho, currently your host. It's our tradition to always ask you, how are you doing? Have you been able to reach out to someone and put a smile on someone's face today? Well, if you have not, it's not too late. So go out there, do something, put a smile on someone's face today. Moving on to the program of the day, we have our guest in the house. He's a gentleman, a golden heart, and a philanthropist. He's in the person of Mr. Israel Ibeleme. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, please, can you tell us more about who Mr. Israel Ibeleme is? Okay, well, my name is Israel Ibeleme, and uh, I'm from other states. Journalist by profession, uh, a philanthropist, as you ever said. Uh, I came from a family of eight, so I'm um, second to last. So that's actually more, a little bit of what you want to tell us today. Okay, the, um, everybody has a story of how they started their foundation. Can you give us a, your own story of how you started the foundation? At that time, uh, it was a point where I felt there is no hope for me and there was actually no opportunity. Since things seems to be, um, since it um, seems to be looked as if that was actually the end of my going through the end of my life. And, um, I left my parents at the, the tender age. So, I made some decisions on my own that I had to go out to the city to my good picture, those were good picture. So I traveled to from my after from my state, so I moved from the Iowa State, which is Utah Coast specifically, to stay with um, my cousin. The bloody lines, things, the issues come up, and all of them asked me to leave this place because I, and uh, at that time. I really do not want to go back home. I don't have a cell phone at that time. So I um, my that was that pushed me to the street. Okay. I have to now struggle. Keep struggling. So I trek anyway, I'm going to I used to trek anyway, I'm going to uh, my square meal it was 20 naira. I used to buy rice. Five naira. Then I really I used to buy for more sometimes five naira. Or if I used to keep that five naira as pocket money, then I drink normal water, which is not um, uh, water or um, pure water. I think it was pure water as well. It's for big men. Mm. And then so I don't take it. Because I don't I can't afford it. Mm. So I try to leave uh, with according to, to me. Yes, yeah, and at that point poverty take over life. I mean, it doesn't work out for me and everything was so difficult for me in that time. So I I, I start struggling on my own. I actually say I sleep on the streets of Porta Coast. I sleep on the streets of Porta Coast um, for six months. At that point, I have to wear one, um, I wear one trouser, a pair, a pair of trousers, there's one set of sandals, same uh, shirts for six months. So how did I live with that? I used to wash the dish up the top in the night and I wear it with water, mm. sleep with it, then to dry out my body the following day. Mm. The guy that gave me cotton to sleep with is alive. His name is Chokobe. Mm. Yes. I, I live at his name is Chokobe is alive. He gave me some because he was an apprentice. So whenever they sell um, um, electrical parts, then them they close. I used to beg him for cotton, those cartons of uh, bulbs and all of that. Mm. I used to like like a mat. So I don't have pillow, I don't have mattress, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. I don't even have uh, mats to like that. So what I have was the carton, mm -hmm. yes. So where I used to keep my clothes then is in the uh, transformer. Mm -hmm. That is actually my room of money, so people are not room of money. So that is the public transformer, people come out there. So I used to keep my clothes. My clothes is not like, it wasn't clothes, not like it's never clothes too. 
I have this, you know, this uh, black nylon. You want to say twenty naira? That mm. nylon. Mm. That is my grandfather's box that I have. <laughs> mm. You can call it box, you can call it gun box, but yeah. that one is the first box I have. Mm. So that's why I keep my clothes, and I keep it inside in transfer because I know that nobody will go to transfer to steal. Mm -hmm. So I see those things are valuable things, but it's nothing to write home about. They're not useful. Do you get? They're not actually not useful. Mm. To other point, people call me all kind, different kinds of names. Yeah. People call me arm robber. They call me a madman. They call me witchcraft. They didn't. They call me. People abuse me all because they, they always see me outside. Because they, when they wake up in the night, they see me outside. In the day they see me outside. So you're a madman. You're not where are you coming from? I'm always dirty because I don't have. My soap I use is caustic soda. I don't know if you are modern, you should be yeah, you are born with digital digital machine. <laughs> I use caustic soda, that soap, that local soap mm -hmm. that is white. Mm -hmm. That had a lot of caustic on it, like peels your hands and all of that. That was my betting um, soap. What I my cream was red oil. I use red oil as cream. I could not a lot of, a lot of stories, well. yes. A lot of stories. Uh, I never believe in myself. Uh, I never believe in people. When I see you, like the way you dress, I can't even approach you because I'm afraid of my life. I say, ah, this, you are for rich people, I'm for poor people. You know, mm -hmm. I just isolate myself from, from that relationship. Yeah, yeah. So I can't even tell you what I can do. So I don't even believe I can do something that can give me money. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to get into photography, to go and take pictures of people. Ah, people, some of them are like, no, we want to do photography. Photography is for poor people. I'm already poor. I tell you what I want to do is for poor people. I didn't know, I didn't even understand something there. Mm -hmm. So they, they try to discourage me from engaging, try to discourage me from um, engaging myself in that uh, okay. kind of business I want. Just feeling like photography, I should try to go anything. So I take it up, I say, no, the photography I will do it. So I hang my like, camera on my neck. I, I walk around, take people's people, not me, like, they don't even know me. It's only people, a lot of people are alive. The first woman that advised me at that time, I tell me about her story, Auntie Anne, she's alive. Her husband kicked out of the house. The mama said, How can you be, how can you, be uh, how can you get close to this wretched, uh, homeless boy? You know, because her husband is a bank, a bank manager up to now. Then she, you know, that are encouraging me to grow up in life. A lot of people, like three persons, I, I always, I, I can't remember it. The girl that gave me mat, the girl that always wants to steal food from the house and give to me to eat. And the woman that advised me. These are the people that laid the foundation of my life. And then I came from a family. I'm a parent, so we have a lot of things in our house. And, but what happened is that I didn't want to let them know what I was going through. Because if I ever let them know, they would ask me to come back home. I didn't want to go home. Do you understand me? In all of this now, God not help me push me out of poverty. So one night I was sleeping. I had I, I dream. I had a picture of my life. Mm. Everything about me. One, one night, and the one that I had in my life, my or the one that I had that night was that I asked you to go through all this because I know where you're going to. I have to turn back. I know there is someone who is currently living the same life I have lived before. Mm. There is someone who has no clothes, who has no food. There's someone that, as I'm talking to you, that's sleeping outside along the road, mm -hmm. who has no roof over their head. Mm. I said, no, I have to go back and reach out to these people. So, what was your motivation at that time, when all this was happening? What was your motivation? Oh, I, I had a dream, and I said, God gave it to me. My story, I saw my picture of my story like this, in the dream. So, that made, I had to rewind, I had to, I had to remember where I'm coming from. God already go actually blessing me, so I just like a young boy now. You are running away, you know. You are very busy. I said, no, no, but this is where I'm going to. It's not my, my place. This is where I need to. So what did happen is that in 2006, I started something that has been based on the foundation. Honestly speaking, if anybody tell me that today that they will, I to be like Israeli the foundation, I won't believe it because I started something that I have passion for, not something that I have. I, I, we organize or we have a group of people that advise me. Nobody advises me. One day I say, Oh, I'm going to reach out to people because I know that that area where I lived before, the area where I lived before, a lot of people are going through, are going through problems and all of that. So I said, Okay, I'm going to reach out to some people. So I have to, I save 7,000 naira. So I'm going to use it to buy rice. Rice was 1,500 naira a pack. So I plan to buy three bags and all that tomatoes and all that. Tomatoes, a carton was like 900 naira then. So, I, 
I, I put that money together. So while in the store, a woman walked to me and said, ah, this small boy, what are you doing with this? All these items, you all like them. I said, I want to grab you to people. He said, hey, you want to give to people? So I was supporting with 10,000. That was the first time I received 10,000. I mean, for that woman, I don't know why she helped you now. 10,000. So, and I had 30, uh, 17,000. So my items took up. So, and I used the opportunity to reach out to so many people. Do you understand? Okay. No, it wasn't a foundation idea. As of that time. As of that time. So, time. so the next amount I invested was twenty thousand. The other one I invested was uh, thirty thousand, and on and on and on. But okay. before then, that time I was going through that problem. I was going to watch people's clothes. Hmm. The elderly people. Some of them are still at my bed. I, I want. I want to. I have to watch their clothes. I was watching their clothes. I go and fetch water for them. People abuse me. People abuse me. Discour- that made me abuse, like discouraging you. Ah, yeah, my uh, grandmama, son. You know, tell you some things that make you to stop what you want to do. Like nice people in the society, but the words they hear on the daily basis make mm. them not to get involved with anything. Mm. Do you understand? Know yeah. People abuse me. At the point, I have to start cooking for them. I cook in my house. And I'm on you that time. They will, they will give me a claim for them. I cook in my house. I can't give it to them. From there, I will eat. So, when, the, when did the foundation start? When did you start at the foundation, like, properly? Like, that was about 2008. 2008. Properly. Okay. Properly. Yeah. Properly. 2008. Okay. Yes, I started in 2008. That was in my place, in my home place. Okay, in your home place. Yes. You started yeah. full time. Yes. Yes. And Tell us what you do in the foundation. What are those things that you can be identified, you know, that the foundation do? No, it's also about it's Israeli Bemer Foundation is is about a community development project that we put back on community development projects okay. and human capacity building. Do you understand? Yeah. Um, coming from my story, you know that you need to help people to grow, yeah. and at the same time, you need to build people. Do you understand? Yeah. So what we what you embark on because most of our projects have um, that school acquisitions like you have to train people and have empowered in so many ways in maybe true. At the first time I started, I started with Casablanca Gandhi machine. Okay. There are some elderly people in my place and some youth that are not working. So what I did was to those youth I bought what they call fertilizer to pump tire. Mm. I buy fertilizer for them. They are pumping tire. Then the Elderly people, I will. I purchased. I, I bought a uh, what do you call it? Um, I bought a um, cassava grinding machine. But they can't work. They can't go to farm. So they can grind cassava and get like ten to fifteen and all of that to sustain yes, themselves. Yes. So then I've done that. Then I, I sewing. I, I provide um, sewing machine for so many of them and all of that. Then food items. We've done that several times. Like food items several times. A scholarship. I have a scholar who's also a graduate. So through my foundation mm-hmm. as well. I subscribe to that as well. From my school, secondary schools, we give people scholarships in so many ways. Then uh, we train people in fashion design. We equip them, we give them all the unnecessary the equipment they need. So what I do is, when you when you give someone, um, when you when you give them um, equipment, we don't let them go like that. So we provide um, training training mm. for them to let them utilize that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, um, not too long ago, in like the year before, uh, last year, in Nasarawa State, I built two shops, two shops. I built one for a Muslim, I built one for a Christian. Because I don't believe that, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm not set the set standard. Mm. You don't look at people based on your religion, where you're coming from, mm-hmm. your family members and all of that. Yeah. You want to give, you give from the of your So, it, we, don't, we should unite, unite we should be united. Do you understand yeah. me? Now I give, I give, um, I built um, um, two, three shops, the two shops, sorry, one for Muslim and one for Christian. And I equip it, I equip the shop to provisions and all of that. So, go there and they're doing very well. So, yeah, I, community provide the land, they will build the shops. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then I, in that same area, I trained, um, I trained uh, um, five um, students. On fashion design, so I have to go to a company which is the fashion design company. I pay them for a year six months for training. They are graduating this year. At the next month, they call me for they call me for their graduation. Mm. 
Yeah, the question. Maybe I can invite you in and go in there. Yeah, the, the question this next month, August, right? Mm-hmm. We are in August already. We're in August. Yeah, so the question. The yeah, the question this month. They will be presenting this month. Okay. This month yeah. to make them a yes system to so the strategy yeah. training. Yeah. But we we'll provide their their sewing machines. Mm-hmm. Everything we we'll provide everything for them. Mm-hmm. So so on and on. We have done a lot, and I don't know where to. How do you source for funds? Basically, that has been a major challenge. Okay. Yes, fund has been my major challenge. I've been able to do what I have done because it's a passion. And the reason why I'm very careful to ask people for for public funds for support was because I discovered that most people initiated foundation for um, personal purpose, like want to reach themselves, want to make more money. Mm-hmm. So in quotes. I don't, a lot of people approach me, ah, you have done, they have a lot of evidence, they have a lot of things, let's just go to this organization and collect money and all of that. That's actually, I'm not really moved by that. But, you know, I have to thank God because God always provides everything that I needed. Yes, I'm telling you, God, there's no time, all these projects, I'm telling you that I've done this project, not like maybe we're going to do it. As I'm talking to you now, I just finished renovating three classroom blocks. Which will be commissioned to let the, the student revolution. Mm. It costs us money. Mm. I save to get that money. That's good. Do you understand? That's so, to say you don't get any support. Nobody has sponsored, no organization, NG. I have not written a letter signed and sent to you. I'm seeking for support. I had, but one thing I realized is that maybe because it's a ghost fund, I, I think God, I, I always think God, like, Look, this is a foundation. Don't me. You are giving it to people, I'm not taking it. So uh, I don't. Not like maybe you, you I can I can you no know, I can I, I know I know people can ask for a phone they give me a user and buy a car. Maybe this is my twelve to thirteen years of this project. Mm. For two thousand and six, that is primary, two thousand eight fully. This is twelve to twelve, eleven, thirteen years on this project. And it's keep counting. So just imagine if I use if I was using it for um phone reason. They calling people, they are giving me money, money was too big, maybe I forget about the charity. So I said how to build house, how to build my house, how to continue, how to buy more cars and all of that to reach myself, to enjoy with my friends and all and uh, people like you will start advising me, you know, you need to you are getting uh, you will soon die. Come and drop your money, eat your money and start eating public funds. But I know go have a way. And honestly speaking, it's the project is bigger than me now. Let me be honest with you. Because the amount of money that I needed, that I need for a project is heavy is rich. So I need people to be part of this project. People that are sincere. But well, before we come to that, being uh, telling us the projects that you have on hand, uh, do you have volunteers? People that? Yeah. Well, well, I have volunteers. I need to see more volunteers. More volunteers. Yes. Okay. Wow. Sincere volunteers. Do you have any criteria? Any criteria for volunteers to join? Go down to join. Do you have anything like you must have this, you have to be this, you have to be that? Do you have any criteria like that? When you go to church, the pastor tells you, <laughs> well, uh, you have any criteria for you to the church. Charity is from the heart, okay. does not have qualification. Okay. Okay, that's great. Yes. Now, you have. You Humanitarian is something that came from the heart. You must have a sense of woman. You must know that this is charity. Something that you must have passion. This is a charity. You must have passion for it. Something like I need to help, not for myself, for someone else oh, no. to survive. Oh, okay. Yes, I want to contribute not from my own selfish interest for someone to survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is policy. Yes. Yeah, so know. coming back to the project, you have you were talking about you have a lot of projects. Yeah, can you projects. be more specific about the projects you have at hand right now? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm I'm actually I'm planning to go to Plato. This is people plan to in IDB Hub. That's been a long time project for because that's not formed. Yes, uh, we have some of the requirements. Then I'm trying to set up a skill acquisition center. So instead of uh, training people there and there, you can have a place where we train people together. Yeah, let's take it up. And uh, it will be constant, that will be constant training. Okay. I need that to be done. Yes, I want to plan for that with the skill acquisition center. So we can design it and get that done. And put that place. I'm trying to train people in uh, uh, photography, okay. uh, photography, and uh, computer in, in the computer science, and train them in fashion and 
um, uh, makeup. Okay. Makeup. Okay. And all these things, I don't want to train them and let them go like that. That's mm. my problem. That is my major problem. And this one has made me sleepless night. Mm. Because I can't train a photographer without giving the camera. No, mm. it's not in the sense. Yes. I can't train someone in a fashion uh, design without providing kits like sewing machines and all of that. Yes, it is. I can't train somebody the makeup without giving a makeup kit. What is the sense of training? True. So we really, I really need people to be part That's of this true. particular project mm. now. This year in a project, for that project now. That makeup, the fashion design, the photography, and the computer. Like I train on computer without giving the laptop. No. So you have to when you train them, you must keep them. I always mention when I train I don't equip them. Yeah, they have to start off with that. Someone dashed me a small MF2 camera. That what I said that bit. And the person bought it then as two hundred naira. So that was an empowerment. Okay. But I utilized the opportunity. Despite the problems along the line, don't do it, do it, do it, discouragement and all that. But keep pushing. So when you are when you are when you are helping someone, you need to help someone to stand. So look, I have to give a laptop, go and get your own business and all that. So I need those. I need people to be part of the project. Yes, this particular one. The skill acquisition center and project. And I have another project as well. Um, okay. Uh, what um how can these viewers out there, how can they connect with you? Do we have any um, contacts? That yes, can... yes. Um maybe this week we'll launch our website. Okay. Uh, Israel Ibleme Foundation O R G. Yes. Then we have an email, you can email us. Okay. Israel Ibleme Foundation at Yahoo.com. Okay. We're on Facebook, okay. we're on Twitter. Uh, we also need to Instagram. Uh, people can Google to know what we are doing, what we have done in the past. So there are stories to Vanguard and all of that. Okay, there's no reason why we're back on the project. Okay, the, my we also have number. Uh, so okay, the numbers are displayed on the screen. The numbers that you can reach the foundation, and um, as you said, it, they need assistance. So they need people to join them, and you know work on this project that they have. Um, on the final note. Do you have any advice for people who want to join or do what you are doing? You know, any word of advice, any thing that you have to tell them? Be faithful. Don't be afraid to fail. Trust and believe in who you are. Be strong in the spirit. Believe in yourself. Maybe I'm a problem. Do what you know you can do best. Bless those you make and bless. That's my best one. Okay, um, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time with you in the studio. It has been Mr. Israel Bellemé in the studio, and um, we want to thank you for coming. We hope to have more of you. Um, we hope to have more of you in our program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Please um, reach out to someone today. Just put a smile on someone's face because uh, contact us through the number shared right now on your screen for any further information, anything you want to access. There's a number shared right now on the screen. On the screen, sorry. Um, you can also reach out to our social media platform shared right now on the screen. Please do contact us, and uh, we would love to hear from you. It's been a lovely time. It's been your favorite show, Golden Heart Show, a show where we meet, we talk, and we share it. Join us next time on this program as we bring you information and educate you and enlighten you on how to go about reaching out to the less privileged. Please do call us if you have any philanthropic event that you want us to cover. Feel free to call us on the numbers shown right now on your screen, and we'll be so glad to come and cover your event. Until I come your way next time, I am Chizo Bachukukora, aka Chizo, telling you to have a nice day and try to put a smile on someone's face. Bye.